Nathaniel the Prospect Wood, who returns to action next week at the very, very excited uh, UFC London card. Nathaniel, great to sit down and chat. How are things at you today? Yeah, everything's good, mate. As I say, um, you know, I'm in that weight cutting situation now where it always sucks on fight week, but, you know, it's part of the game and, you know, come Friday night, we'll feel a lot better after them weighing. So, yeah, you know, I'm feeling good in training. I'm, I'm ready to rock. So I just need to get through this week and then the fun bit begins. <laughs> I've got to ask because the first time that we spoke, the, the conversation was around the hand injury. How is how is all things with the, with the hand? Is it fully healed? Touch wood is uh, good as gold. So, yeah, you know, I don't want to jinx it, but at the moment I'm flying with it in training. You know, I'm doing everything I possibly can be doing, you know, putting maximum power behind it. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm looking for a knockout with it come Saturday night. <laughs> uh, I want to ask as well, because the badge there is, is too tantalising not to touch on. Um, GB top team, how are things with the gym? How are things with the setup and, and all of that? Amazing. Honestly, it's a dream come true, that gym. You know, it's about 12,000 square foot, state-of-the-art facility. We have everything that I've never had before in a gym, you know, heating, air conditioning, saunas, treadmill, everything you could think of, we've got it. So it was that missing puzzle piece, I think, that I needed in my fight camp, you know, and I haven't got to travel an hour and a half to get to the gym and back now. So it's five minutes down the road from me. I can go there, you know, everything's under one roof. So at the moment, as I say, it is really a dream come true. You know, I've been in this game for 12 years and I've never had that sort of facility and on my doorstep. So that with the coaches I've got, you know, I really feel like that's going to be a game changer for me. I did want to ask about that because you are actually the only fighter based in London, I believe, on this card. So so what is kind of fight, what does fight week, what's the setup for you? Do you kind of, will you spend the week at home? Will you... Were you sleep in your own bed the night before? What's the kind of setup for fight week? The UFC booked me in for the hotel for the whole week, which is, I think, Tuesday to Sunday. Yeah. I only stay there on the Thursday night because then I cut weight that night in the sauna and stuff, wake up and do the weigh-ins, you know, um, purely because I like being with my family, man. Do you know what I mean? I, I, it's about an hour for me to get to the hotel, 45 minutes, let's say. But, yeah, I want to be at home. With my missus, my dog, you know, he's over there. Look at that, you know. How can I uh how can I say no to being at home to that? Do you know what I mean? So it's the uh the luxuries that I get in fighting in my hometown. I get to stay at home with my family, my friends, and yeah, you know, uh I'll just stay up there on the weight cut day and then um even come home after the fight. So it's cool. Check the record earlier before jumping on. Um your record fighting in London. It's nine wins and one loss. So what are what when I when I say about fighting in your hometown, what are kind of the happiest memories that come to mind? Obviously that London UFC debut, that was uh, you know, that was uh, stuff dreams are made of for me anyway. Um, you know, my first ever UFC event that I went to was at the O2. It was watching Brad Pickett versus Neil Siri, Jimmy Manoa at the time versus Alexander Gustafsson. And I remember saying to my dad, look, if I can headline this, that's my, my dream come true. You know, forget the UFC belt. That's what I want to do. I haven't headlined it, but I mean, I was on the main card, you know, so that that for me was a, a dream come true. This time, I think I'm the first fight. So I think the UFC wanted to start the show with a bang. Don't know what I'm doing as the first one, but mate, it doesn't bother me. I'm going to go in there, finish this guy quick and come out and get a pint in my hand. So, um, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to a nice night Saturday night. I did want to ask about that because the last time there was a card in London, you were part of the four-man press conference with yourself yeah. until Matt Vidal and Edwards. And then now you're the first fight on the card. So what are your opinions on? I know you, you just said there you don't it doesn't really make a difference, but what are your kind of opinions being the first fight? Well, it is, it is a stacked card. You know, obviously I've been out now with an injury for about a year and a half. And obviously my opponent originally Ludwig, he was um he's not really ranked very high in, mm. so I'm assuming it was just kind of that but there are fighters on the card where I'm a bit like you know how have they kind of bumped up in front of me but I don't know you know as I say the UFC maybe they want to start the uh the event with the best fight of the night because that's what it's going to be um mm. but yeah you know it confuses me especially with the, the majority of people in there I think are going to be my hometown friends and family but 
yeah, you know, as, as I say, it's not really going to phase me too much. It just means that I get to get in and out pretty quick and then enjoy the night. Yeah. I'd just like to touch a little bit on, on camp just before we get into the fight itself, because I've seen from both you spoke yours and some other social medias that there's been a lot of new bodies and some bodies traveling to the gym over the last couple of weeks. Um, I saw a picture of you and Cage Warriors champ Jordan Vucena. I know Brendan lochnane has been there. I think Mark, do you Casey still there? So what has all yeah. the, the new looks in the gym been like for you and kind of improving and uh, getting sharp for, for this next fight? Yeah, it's been great. You know, everyone here there is is there to help each other. So it's been great to have, you know, new new people in, new faces, people that do things differently, people that can show me different techniques that work for them. So, you know, it's been really nice. And that's what I say about the gym. You know, we now that we've got that state of the art facility, it's easy for us to invite people down. Before, you know, it's hard to invite people down when you're training in a really small gym, you know, no heating, that sort of thing. You know, people don't really want to travel for that. So, yeah, um, yeah you know, it's cool now that we've got that gym and, you know, it's nice to have people like Mark DiCasey on board and, you know, representing the team. Is Mark there full time now? I'm not sure if he's going to be here full time, but he's been here for the majority of this fight camp. He's fighting the week after me on uh, the Ohio card. So, um yeah, you know, he's been flying through training at the moment, so I'm excited to see his fight as well. Yeah, good to hear. Well, we've got your fight at hand, uh, Vince Morales, Saturday night. Um, first yeah. and foremost, po- opponent change on relatively short notice. How does that kind of affect things coming in? Uh, it doesn't really affect me in any way because, you know, at the end of the day, in this sport, I always know that pullouts are a thing. You know, there's injuries, etc. At any moment, opponents can change. I'm filled with different sparring partners at the gym. So I'm always just looking to improve me as an athlete and be prepared for whatever the UFC bring me. Um, You know, I think that this fight, Vince Morales, I believe is a better fighter than Lyudvik. He's three and three in the UFC coming off two wins streaked. You know, he's got a a good knockout under his, under his CV against um, Lewis Smolka. Yep. Um, but for me, stylistically, much better matchup for me. You know, Lyudvik, I think, was going to be a kind of, oh, I've got a fight to defend takedowns and, you know, just kind of trying to, you know, I think he would have just been trying to stall my game as such. Mm. But now, you know, Vince Morales, he brings it, man. You know, he, he brings good hands. He's down to scrap. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident that either this is going to be a fight of the night or performance of the night for me. Um, I'm excited for it, you know, I really am. So, you know, I hope he obviously stays healthy this week, um, taking a fight on short notice. You know, I'm not sure how his weight cut is, etc. but I just hope that, you know, everything's going well for him. And yeah, come Saturday night, let's bring it and let's put the, uh, the show on for the crowd. I can see the excitement in your eyes as we're talking about this fight. And I think what's good is because we're so near to it, the, I can see that the excitement is building in you. I, I guess, do, do you just kind of, is, is there just a, a willingness to want to get in there as soon as possible to get, you, to get your hands on them? Yes. Man, it's been too long. It's been a year and a half now. And, you know, obviously I had that last fight against Jonathan Martinez, which um, I got injured a month out. So, you know, I had all that kind of build up and adrenaline rush and, you know, whatever you would you'd call them feelings when you've got a fight booked for that to be scrapped. So now, you know, to actually finally get back in there, to be a week out from my hometown, you know, relive that electric experience that I had in 2019. I'm buzzing, mate, you know. <laughs> my bank balance is buzzing as well because at the moment things are getting hard. So, you know, I need to uh, get in there and show the UFC that I'm here to stay. Well, if we look at the odds, um, the, the odds on Morales are actually slimmer than they, are, than they were for Sean and There's actually, you can actually get worse odds on Morales, he's you're less of a favourite against the guy stepping in on two weeks' notice. Would would you agree with them odds? Do you think this is a more difficult fight? Sorry, so he's the favourite. No, so you're you're the favourite. You were the favourite against both Shalon and, and Morales, but but you're a smaller okay. favourite against Morales. So the odds are actually uh, narrower. Uh, I'm assuming they've just gone off records. You know, they probably looked, seen that he's got two wins and a knockout etc I'm on a on, my last fight was a loss so mm. you know maybe they're just doing it like that but um at the end of the day MMA it's a game of luck a lot of it you know it's a game of inches so you know I'm sure that he's just sitting there thinking sweet I can take this fight on a few weeks notice and you know in his head he's probably thinking he can come in and get the win you know but I've been working my bollocks off for the past 12 weeks so 
I don't know how he's going to be on a couple of weeks' notice, but I'm ready and I'm bringing my A game. So, you know, uh, yeah, I hope he's got heat. We don't see a lot of American fighters wanting to make the trip out here, make the trip out to the UK because the vast majority of cards are a much more favourable time zone and travel to them. So when Shalanam fell out, was there, was there kind of a worry or a perhaps a, an anxiety that you wouldn't get maxed up or that that matchup might be quite difficult to, to get a hold of? Yeah. 100%. You know, I, I deal with anxiety. So, you know, when the O2 roof blew off a month ago, I was sitting there thinking, oh, no, it's, it's all gone wrong. You know, what am I going to do? And, you know, everyone said to me, look, chill out. You know, it's a month away. So um, when obviously Ludwig pulled out, I was like, you know, it's, it's not going to happen, is it? You know, I'm going to end up having no fight again. And But, you know, trying to think rationally, I thought, come on, it's the UFC. No one's going to turn down an opportunity like this. So, you know, for Vince Morales, obviously, he's got to deal with that jet lag. He's got to come over to London in my hometown. But for him, like I say, it's an opportunity. You know, he's uh, getting paid on a couple of weeks' notice. He's going to come in and, you know, I'm sure that he's bringing his, his best version of himself that he can be. So uh, I'm excited for it. I really am. <laughs> Just very quickly, and this is quite a touchy subject. I don't want to kind of labour on this too much. But Sean and I obviously fell out of the fight because of the, the situation in the Ukraine. I guess when you heard that, did it kind of put, put your own career kind of into perspective? Because I'd imagine that there's, you know, you see something like that, there's kind of, as much as your career is your ultimate focus, there's, you know, there's other, it's bigger fish to fry for the, for the opponents. What, 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 was the, what was the kind of feeling like when you heard that news? So I, before the actual kind of war really kicked off, you know, I sent him a message and said, look, mate, I hope, you know, everything's going okay where you are. And I hope this stuff isn't really going to affect you too much. And he replied just saying, thank you, bro, you know, but at the moment, I don't know what's going on. And then literally the next day in Kiev, they, he, he's in Kiev, so he put up a, a story I saw on his Instagram where it was like bomb sirens going off. And uh, as soon as I saw that, I thought, man, he's, he's, he's not going to fight, mm. which of course, you know, and it puts in perspective that, you know, we're suffering here, like weight cut, stuff like that. But this guy's fighting for his life and his family lives. So... You know, I have nothing but thoughts and prayers for him and obviously the people in Ukraine. And, you know, I hope that the world can sort itself out at the moment because it's, uh, it's crazy. It honestly is crazy. I don't know what's going on. I don't really keep up to date with all the politics and the news and stuff. But from what I'm, I'm seeing, you know, it's, uh, it, it's terrible stuff. Yeah. just want to mention there as well, because I know how excited you are to fight back in front of your home fans. Of course, everybody is. But as I mentioned earlier, you're the you're the guy. You're the, it's actually your hometown where this event will take place. Does that come with any extra kinds of pressure? You mentioned the anxieties there. Does that come with any extra anxiety or any extra kinds of pressure going in, if you like? It does put a little bit of extra weight on my shoulders, only to the extent where I feel like you know I'm the one representing. I know there's a lot of UK fighters on there, but I'm the only London fighter, so you know I, I obviously want to represent my my hometown um, and represent them well. But pressure makes diamonds and I do perform under pressure, you know, so having those nerves, having that, let's call it anxiety, makes me perform better. You know, it makes me prepare well, it makes me prepare properly for the whole fight camp. So, um, yeah, you know, I've honestly left no stone unturned. And for me now, it's just about going in there and putting uh, the work in on, on the night. Yeah. The last time we spoke as well, Nathaniel, you talked about, um, you talked about trying to keep on top of your reading. How you like to how you like to keep reading books and keep on top of that? Do you keep on top of that through fight camp? And, and if so, what have what have you been what have you been reading in the in the lead up to this fight? Yes, I do keep up to it, but I've also introduced the old podcasts now. So I didn't really I wasn't really a podcast man, but now because I've been in camp and sometimes you know it's just hard work reading when you you've not got much energy. I kind of just put a, um, a podcast on or all the Bible. So I also downloaded that and, you know, been listening to books online. But um, the last actual book I read was Stephen Bartlett, The, the Sexy Millionaire, or The oh, Happy yeah. Millionaire, which was actually a really good book. A few people recommended it to me, hence why I read it. And uh, because of that, I'm now listening to his podcasts, which are, which are cool. And then currently, right now, I'm reading one of Ant Middleton's books, I have already read his other ones, but I'm now reading the one about mental um, toughness and, you know, becoming stronger. So any little way that I think I can improve mentally, um, yeah, I'm on it. Does your reading kind of uh, 
library or does your podcast library does it change when you're in a fight week does it get a little us in fight camp does it get a little bit more motivational a little bit more kind of helping to yeah, helping to no, get you through and the films i watch you know i'll start watching more motivational films like i might put rocky on or something like that you know so um yeah don't think my missus wants to watch rocky though but <laughs> choice in five week. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just turn back to the, to the fight at hand. Um, I won't ask you for a prediction because the prediction is the most boring question you guys get. But, but what are the goals for 2022? What do you want to accomplish in your career in this calendar year? Just to remain uninjured, healthy, and stay active. You know, that's that's my uh, my plan. I feel like it's been very stalemate for these last year and six months. I feel like you know, lots is happening in the division and. You know, unfortunately, I'm missing out on it. So, um, yeah, it's time to uh, get back in there and show the UFC what I'm capable of. I did want to mention something as well, um, because the story has been matched up for a main event. But what's the beef with you and Cheeto Vera? I've seen you guys go back and forth. It's kind of stalled a little bit. But what is kind of the, the history of the beef between you guys? He beat my coach, Brad Pickett. And when I signed with the UFC, I put a little call out to all the opponents that had beaten Brad and said, look, I'm, I'm here to avenge the losses. As a kind of, a, you know, little bit of a joke, but I'm being serious. And Cheeto replied, or, you know, oh, whatever, I knocked your coach out, blah, blah, blah. So it all just started from that. He agreed and said, yeah, let's fight. You know, I'll kick your ass and whatever. But nothing's come from it. He said to me, yeah, you know, um, what did he say? He tweeted me once saying, stay by the telephone, you get a call today. Well, I sat there like this all day, nothing, nothing come. So, um that's a fight I want. And then every time I've said about, look, this date, there's always an excuse, you know, he's like, Oh no, I'm, I want to fight the month before. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. So, you know, he was just giving it back on Twitter and um, it's all fun and games, but yeah, yeah. I won that fight hundred percent. He's um, he's been matched up against Rob Font. How do you see that fight playing out? Good fight. You know, it is a, it is a good fight to be honest. Um, I think Rob Font gets the win, but, you know, who knows? I think it'll be a good fight. And as I say, it's MMA. So, um, you know, with those four-ounce gloves, you can't ever uh, put anyone out. We've also got the uh, the title fight next month in your division. Um, Sterling versus Jan, the rematch after the, the very controversial first fight. What are, what are your kind of opinions on on that matchup and how do, you see the, how do you see that title fight going? I would really like Sterling to win, Adrian Sterling. Um, but I think Peter Jan's going to do it, um, you know, I just, I just think that he's been looking sharp and, you know, I think he's very dominant. So I think he's going to get the win. Um, but yeah, as I say, you know, I really hope Adrian Sterling does it. I'm rooting for him. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a tough fight. Yeah, 100%. Well, it all starts back with your career on Saturday night. And it was great to sit down and, and catch up a little bit and, and preview the, the fight. And I can't wait to see you back. Uh, and thank you for your time. No, thank you, mate. I appreciate you uh, fitting us in. Pleasure's all mine. Before we finish, Nathaniel, anything you want to say, sign off with sponsors, you want to shout out, the, the floor is yours for the last word. To, to all the people that obviously are supporting me for this fight, you know, I get tons and tons of messages on Instagram and I can't always reply to everyone, but for everyone that's sending me uh, positive messages, appreciate it. So, yeah, um, thank you.